Hi, I'm Kevin Rahm, and I'm chatting with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, listeners, wherever you are in the world right now. This is Hellblazer Biz, with your host, as always, me, Chris Gordon. Well, thank you for joining me yet again. I really appreciate all your support, as always. Please keep sharing, keep tweeting, and keep following uh, for all the exciting news and the exciting interviews that I'm going to be bringing you this year in 2017. Today is no exception. There has been a recent TV series coming on the screens, and it's taken the US by storm, based on the 1987 film with Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, Lethal Weapon. The TV series also takes the same name as Lethal Weapon, and it stars Clay Crawford as Martin Riggs, with Damon Wayans as Roger Murtor. But today I am bringing to you the captain who everybody seems to love. He has this resigned effect, knowing what Riggs is always like. Anyway, I bring to you today... Captain Brooks Avery, a.k.a. Kevin Rahm. This is how it's gonna be. This is what you think of me. It's going down like I told you. This is how it's gonna be. I'll be the last man standing here. I'm not going anywhere It's going down like I told you I'll be the last man standing here Okay, so everybody, I have the absolute honour and pleasure of the company of Kevin Ram today. Kevin, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing, Chris? I'm good, thank you. And I'm very jealous because we've just been talking about how it's winter for you and you're in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's shorts with like a light sweater. It's that weather. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's still rubbing it in, like I said. I was in <laughs> <laughs> almost a 90 degree angle with the wind coming out of work earlier. Yes. Nice, yeah. nice. I don't miss that. No, drizzly and rain. Although you have had rain for two weeks, haven't you? We've had a lot, tons and tons of rain, which we desperately needed, which was good to get. Mm-hmm. Um, but for Southern California, and I'm, I live in Northern California right now, I live right. in Southern California, but um, I'm like, okay, that's enough. We should spread <laughs> this out more. We don't need this every day. You know, like if you don't see the sun in a week, it's like something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, friend. I'd be my colleagues. I've got two. I will say where I work. I've got two colleagues, and uh, one of them's just spent two weeks in California at the California offices. So I'm blaming him because the entire time he, he was over there, it was raining. He, he, oh, that poor guy. He comes all the way <laughs> over know. here. He just he gets British weather. Yeah, yeah. It just didn't stop. Apparently, it was horrendous the entire time he was there. So we've had a good chuckle about that. <laughs> I went. I went to. Uh, I play. I went to Scotland a couple of years ago and played some golf out there. And I remember we were at the old course and Mm -hmm. it was 50 something degrees and we were bundled, you know, we were like layered and like it wasn't raining, but it got sunny Mm -hmm. and got to like 55 and we were still bundled up with like multiple layers and sweaters and there were people sunbathing. Oh yeah. And I was like, what is wrong? They're like, it's the sun. They, it, the sun comes out and they bathe. Like, yep. It doesn't matter how cold it is. This is warm. This is warm. I was oh, like, yeah. wow. Especially in Scotland as well. They'll have their little kilts out topless and be yep. like. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they were wearing. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. I think it gets to about 50, yeah, the f- mid fifties here. And you know, that for us is, it's not a summer's day, but it's, it's warm enough to do what you're it's doing nice. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Anyway, as you know, I've got questions for you. Um, since I, you were kind enough to in, accept the invite um i've had an outpouring of love for your character and for yourself um, cool. from all the fans and sending loads and loads of questions well not low well there were loads and loads of questions i filtered it through <laughs> thank you thank you so otherwise we would be here all day <laughs> and yeah so it's just to find out some more about yourself and obviously about your character and how you feel about being on the, on the show with your with your colleagues and everything like that so to, cool. to kick it off we shall find out a bit more about yourself is what made you decide to become an actor in the first place Oh, um, I remember I, I, I wanted to be an actor. I don't, I didn't, it wasn't like I, as a kid said, I want to be an actor. I think I was kind of always doing it Mm -hmm. unbeknownst to myself, um, uh, which is a more serious conversation. But I, uh, when it, when it started to dawn on me that I could do it, 
I when I'm I switched high schools in the middle of high school, mm-hmm. and I was really big in debate in the first high school. Oh, okay. And I moved to the second high school. Their debate program was really small, but they had a huge theater program. Mm-hmm. So I kind of got thrown into this theater class because I had a debate class before, and they didn't have that. So. They just kind of put me in this theater class. <laughs> and I had done a couple, we did like one play a year at the first school I went to. And I did them, but I, I was like, I don't, you know, I did it to meet the girls from the sister school. <laughs> um, and because my, uh, in the, our freshman year, we had a big brother signed to you as a mm-hmm. senior for a freshman. And um, my big brother told me that I was going to audition for the play. And right. I said, no. And he goes, no, you are. And he was much <laughs> larger than me. And so I did. <laughs> Um, but then, you know, it was, it was fun, but I didn't take it seriously at all. And, and I, even, even in the other school, the second school in Atlanta, Texas, uh, I did not, I was, I did it. I was, it was well received, but it wasn't like, I didn't think of it as a career choice. Mm-hmm. And when I got to college, my intent was to go to law school and I saw this play at the school and it was, I was like, Oh, that's, that's how you're supposed to do it. That's. I now I see, yeah. and I thought I should try that while I'm here. I'll regret it if I don't try it. And worst case scenario, if I take an acting class, it can only help me be a better mm-hmm. lawyer. And then I quickly realized that I, I wanted to play a lawyer. I didn't want to be a lawyer. Right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> excuse me, because I met a couple of people who were actually in law school, and they mm-hmm. were reading uh, tons and tons and tons of things they didn't care about at all. <laughs> and uh, I didn't like to read at all, even yeah. things I liked at that point. Um, uh, so I quickly switched to the theater program, and I never looked back. Fantastic! That's a great way. Just imagine you could have been, you could have been exactly. raking it in as a lawyer by now. <laughs> yeah. It was actually, I think, when I turned like thirty-five, I because in, in the back of my head, when I first moved to LA, I always thought, well, I always gave myself the out. Well, I'll give myself so many years, and mm-hmm. then if it doesn't work out. I'll go back and finish school and go to law school, and I'll do that. You know? Yeah. And I think it was when I turned thirty-five, I realized I it was too late. <laughs> like I was too old at that point. Mm-hmm. To, by the time I finished law school, I'd be you know way too old to start a career. And I was like, okay, that now I it's this is it. I better keep doing this. Yeah. I better keep working because this the I have no other marketable skills. <laughs> no, I'm sure that's not true. You should pick something up along. <laughs> <laughs> I can act like multiple professions. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know that I can actually do them. <laughs> hey, I've got away with it for 15 years doing that. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I hope none of my colleagues are listening. <laughs> <laughs> they, your friends don't watch this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> my wife doesn't. She she doesn't like my voice. So <laughs> it sounds too tinny for her. I think. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, that's cool. I mean, it's it's kind of opposite. Uh, yeah, very similar. I mean, I started out acting myself when I was eighteen, and I loved it. Really? I was it's only the same sort of you know high school stuff and things. I was in a musical. I played Drake the Butler in Annie. Nice. Um, yeah, that was a, that was a nice role. Coming on and just singing my, you know, the upper class. It's a, I did this FBI. You know, he says it's the FBI. Yeah. At the time, it was. I mean, I'm 40, so it was. How old was I? I was 16. The X Files were just the big thing. Wow. And uh, So I was like, I, I've, you know, I was a Mulder wannabe. <laughs> I was just. I think I just watched the scene, so I just came on one night and I was like, uh, Daddy Warburg, sir, it, it's the FBI. And apparently, <laughs> I just did it because I was copying Mulder. But everyone was like, the, the disdain that you had in your voice <laughs> saying FBI was absolutely spot on. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I just copied uh, yeah, David Duchovny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Always copy from the best. Oh, God, yeah. But yeah, no, so I kind of loved it and went out and did German and IT. But I'm trying to get back into it myself. I, I did a little indie film last year. Um, yeah. Uh, well, a little roll of one, twenty-five lines. So it's not that little. It was quite good. It's not that little. No. Um. I'll, I'll tell you off air what what the character was because this is probably good. You know, a question that I would have asked of you is what advice would you give to an, an aspiring actor? And it would be read the script. Would be one because I didn't have the full script. I was given my lines, and on the day I found out my character was not the kind of character that I would ever really want to be. So I will tell you off, Len. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I always get the full script. Always. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> they also gave me extra lines on the day as well, which I wasn't aware of, and yeah, it, it was it was good. Though. Now, do you think there was there was this uh, deliberate withholding to get you to do it? I think so. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, All right. I definitely okay. think so. involved a cloak and obviously muffled for voiceovers. So wow. I'm sure you can imagine what kind of a <laughs> yep, yep, got it. Dark deed that was. Um, so yeah, no, that's a, but yeah, it's, it's a great story to have and, and you know, to find out someone's gone from being or wanting to be a lawyer originally into acting. It's quite a nice turn. Yeah. That's quite a huge turn actually. It's well, and, and for me, it was it was it wasn't that I desperately wanted to be a lawyer. It was that where where I grew up. 
um, you know, we were barely middle class, mm -hmm. if not, you know, below. And um, the the only way, as a young man where I grew up, either you did manual labor or you took over a family business or you became a lawyer or a doctor. Like oh, and I, <laughs> and I, we didn't have a family business, and I, I was, I'm, I didn't want to do manual labor. Yeah, and uh, um, and I didn't want to do medicine. And so I was good at debate. I was good at using my mind that way. So I thought, okay, well, that's my opportunity mm -hmm. to move up, you know. And so that's why it wasn't that I wanted to be a lawyer. It was that 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 was my way of having a good job. And I thought I could get away with that. Fair and when enough. I when I realized people would pay me to do this, I think like, that's even better. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. It must be. You know, it's a. It's a fantastic career to have. It's a very volatile career, but it's a, it's a great career to have. So, It's great, it's great when you're working. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, uh, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand uh, from the amount of actors I've spoken to through here. It's, I think 90% of actors are, are unemployed, and it's, it's oh, and, and, and I think, at any yeah, one I think time. The number of the members of the Screen Actors Guild, and that's yeah. the people who, who have gotten a job before. Mm. Not to mention all the people that want to get in the Screen Actors Guild. Exactly. And I think the number's probably higher. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a cutthroat business. Um, it's just and it's and it's hard because there's only so much you can control. Mm -hmm. You know, I I can only go in to so there's only so many parts available to me, and then I can only go into so many rooms, and I can only try to get so many jobs. And yeah, um, you know, I've been very lucky that way. So, <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Speaking of that kind of, what kind of inspirations did you have? Obviously, while you're going through and and. Studying to be a lawyer, there must have been some people on screen that. Um, or you know, it's funny. I I'm trying to think early on. Uh, my in college, you know, my 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 intention to be a lawyer didn't last very long in college. It was yeah. less than a couple of semesters, so it wasn't <laughs> like I got deep into that track. Yeah. Um, but I remember when I first started studying theater at college, Kenneth Branagh was a big. I mean, a Henry Five had just come out, mm -hmm. and um. And that was a big influence. And, you know, I think he it was not long. I can't remember the time frame, but, it, you know, it was within that five year period that he wrote his first biography. Yeah. Which when he was less than 30 or he was 20, <laughs> 20 something. Um, Ridiculously awful. A little, awful. <laughs> a little ridiculous. But, uh, but I, I wanted that's, – that's who I wanted to emulate for a time. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, it quickly turned uh, to, like, people like Jeff Bridges and, and uh, pe people that had – a humanity to their roles. Like if I could emulate one career, it'd be Jeff Bridges, like yeah. someone, who, someone who's done a myriad of types of roles mm -hmm. and each of them is specific and, um, and, and memorable. And I feel like he steals every movie he's in, not in a bad way. Yeah. Like he's so specific and so human. Um, and that became like the, the beacon for mm -hmm. me. Excellent. Excellent. That's a good, Good choice to have. <laughs> I, I think you know it's not a bad career to have. No, no, exactly. Yeah, you know, and say to put, make that sort of humanity and push that humanity and human feeling across on screen. It is difficult yeah. because it's a you know for people like me, it is it's a glass screen that you're watching. So to, right. you know, and I've got to say from I mean I'm a, I'm quite early on in Lethal Weapon at the moment. So, but from what I've seen, that that does come across the the character of Avery Brooks is you can I've already picked out the kind of characteristics from him and the empathy that he can put across. And that does come out on the screen as well. There's obviously Good, empathy you. and sarcasm, I think, as well. <laughs> you know, but, 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 well, yeah, there's a lot of sarcasm, <laughs> but, it, you know, that, that you know, anyone who's, who's you can use sarcasm well has to have empathy, I believe. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like they, they go hand in hand for me personally. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, and that kind of role in the past is always usually just a curmudgeon -y old white guy. You know, it's <laughs> like, you know, just, you know, boring, angry, you know, established yeah white guy and so um to add those layers to that character i found interesting and luckily that's what they were looking for excellent excellent that's great that is great you're right about empathy and sarcasm as well because I, I i do i've got a bit of both um sarcasm seems to be stronger for me <laughs> that's that's what growing up on monty python black adder does for you <laughs> oh two of my favorites oh two yeah of my favorites. yeah i don't think you can ever beat those <laughs> right yeah um, I've got them all listed. Maybe, well. maybe, maybe Faulty Towers. It's oh, a, it's up. Yeah, that's it's up that, there. That's but up that's, there as well. You know, 
Did, I can't believe they only actually made 12 episodes of Faulty Towers. I know. Shocking, I know. isn't it? <laughs> it seems like there's so many more of them. I know. It's, I think the amount of times they were repeated, but they never, ever got old. They just... <laughs> yeah. 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 Sadly, we lost Manuel, didn't we? Andrew Sachs last year yeah. in, in that horrendous 2016 year that it was.